Hey, how's it going and today we're taking a little look at Radio Force in Unreal Engine. This has a lot of applications and games and you could use it for just creating a lot of kind of destruction and mayhem. So it sort of looks like this. I have this little mock-up set here and if I hit, uh, let me go up, I have kind of a flight control here. If I hit one, it applies the force. And it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Um, <laughs> See those boxes flying off in the distance. So anyway, I'll show you how to do this real fast. It's it's not too hard to do. I'm gonna go to the first person template here, and just go create. And it just takes a minute to load up. General settings we'd like to kind of adjust to our gameplay area. And it's I think one of the things is just to get rid of this stuff kind of blocking the way. So just come in here, and you can you can select it this way in the scene or. A faster way is just to come up and uh, outliner and select it, but I can get rid of most of this. These don't have any motion, most of these, so I'm just getting rid of a few of them, the bigger ones. And then what I'd like to do is go ahead and add some starter content to this. So, not starter content, but some third person. So we'll just come into add, add feature contact pet, and we'll add the third person right here. And that just takes a minute to come in. And then in here, there's a character that's kind of cool. So we can just grab this mannequin here, the mesh. We'll just get the static mesh, Quinn, skeletal mesh, excuse me. And in a second tutorial, I'll show you what more we can do with this. Take your actor, and then we can actually get a couple of them. And just pop them around like this. And maybe we'll rotate, rotate them like that in a little circle in a circle. To get started on this, all we have to do is if we come over here into the place actors, we can look for something called radial force actor. And we can just drag it into the scene like this. And then if we back away a little bit, back away like that, we can, if it's selected in the details panel, if we come here and we go impulse velocity change and check that box, we can put this at like 5,000, we can start, you can adjust these values, and under force, we can just put 50, something like that. And then under radius here, we can expand it so it encompasses the entire cube area, like that. So then if we come in here, now make sure it's selected still, and come into the level blueprint, and we can just right click and get a keyboard event. Well, we can create a reference right there to our radial force actor. And then all we have to do is get a keyboard press and we'll just use the number one for this. So every time we press it, we create a burst of energy. And then off of here, if we drag, we can search for the force, component force, get component force right here. And then if we come up here, and drag off of here, there's an option for firing impulse. So like I said, this has a lot of potential. Let's go ahead and compile and save this and go ahead and dock this up here. And let's just see what happens the first time through. I hit one. So, Oh, you know what, see what it's doing? It's actually throwing me around. It threw me out of the <laughs> So what we have to do to fix that is just go into game mode and switch it to game mode base and let's go ahead and hit play so now I can move around but I'm not I'm not tied to that body so let's get a kind of an overview here and we'll hit one and see so you notice our skeletal meshes aren't moving but all our boxes are so this could kind of be a fun game to see if you can knock the boxes out of the play area but let me one thing I've learned in doing this is that these walls are actually too high so let me escape out of the game and let's select this wall and let's just go ahead and scale it down to maybe like that and we'll scale all four of these walls down so I really feel like this radial force could be the basis of a game or maybe like one level of a game where you're dealing with some entity or something that has a lot of power to just cause kind of this generalized impulsive destruction or whatever you want to call it there we'll leave it like that now on our on our skeletal meshes 
it looks like they've unloaded. So I've shown this before. One trick to do that, to solve that, is if we just go streaming over here and enable streaming. Go yes, go no, and then disable it again. It will load all our actors. So there's all our actors again. Okay, so now if we select these three actors, we can st simulate physics on them, but to make it kind of go along with the game, what we can do is come up in here to the level blueprint, and what we're going to do is drag off of here and go do once, and then we can get a reference. We should be able to get a reference to our skeletal mesh actor. Like, let's get this one here. And... What we do is hit with that, select it, go back into the level blueprint, and drag off here and right click, excuse me, right click and create a reference to the skeletal mesh. And then here, drag off here, we'll go simulate physics. So, what will happen is when the, this is all kind of meshed together here, what will happen is when we hit that, it'll cause the character basically to ragdoll. But I think it'll just be that one. So let's see what happens. So we'll hit play. Let me get a better position up here. And let's go ahead and hit one. Oh, see, she... <laughs> so I, it looks like I'd have to create individual references for each, each uh, character here. So let me uh, come down here real fast because it's a level blueprint. I don't think I'm going to do two at once. So I'm here, open level blueprint, and right click, create another reference to Quinn 3. Oh yeah, I've got to do each instance. So come back in here. So I could consider doing that as a blueprint class. So we got these references now. So I should be able just to put these targets in here. Kind of make it a little mess here. And plug this one in. Okay, so now when I oops, so now when I hit one, compile and save that, they're all gonna they're all gonna blow. So as soon as the explosion happens, let me let me come up here in the sky a little bit, back up a little bit more. Let me hit one. It really starts bashing them around. And then the game could be over once they're all... It's interesting because actually it almost seems like they'll go through. They'll actually be driven through the static mesh, which is really interesting. So, look, it went through all... went through. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a, a quick look at this. I have one more tutorial I want to do on how you could kind of turn this into a little game where once all the meshes are out of the play area, then the game is kind of over. So that's the initial blast, and then after that, you can see the power of this thing. It just, it really sends stuff flying, and literally puts the mesh through the wall. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I will uh, check back with you in another tutorial on where else you can go with this.